Good afternoon. It's a pleasure and honor to be here today at Northwestern, my son's alma mater, to talk about my journey, my journey and my career and my life. And it's really not that remarkable, but it has taken some twists and turns I never really would have thought about. I started in Georgia, moved to Calumet City, where I attended Old Style University, and through a lot of twists and turns, found my way to the Tribune Tower in the C-suite. And what I really am is I'm a son, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a grandfather, and oh yeah, I'm a media executive. I've held over 16 positions in 35 years, evidence that I have trouble holding a job. I've seen tons of change, I've seen disruption, and I've had success, but I've also had my share of failure. My journey is not remarkable. Unique, probably. Remarkable, not. My name is Tony Hunter. I truly believe that this presentation, it's not where you start, but where you finish, has been the motto and the principle that I've lived by. As I reflect back on my journey and I think about successes, I'm very proud of that. But what I've really come to realize and acknowledge is the joy and the satisfaction comes from the journey itself. And my journey has had a lot of starts and stops, plenty of chapters, and as I said, not all successful chapters. So today, what I'd like to share with you are the lessons I've learned from the best school you could ever attend, the School of Hard Knocks. And in these lessons, I'm hopeful, regardless of where you're at in your journey, whether at the beginning, the middle, or the end, that maybe you can find a few of these and help you navigate your way through. I also hope there's a bit of inspiration in my message. Inspiration that it's possible to achieve greatness, achieve success, however you define that success. What I've found as I look back is really a blueprint for success is adapting, evolving, reinventing. It also helps to surround yourself with great people. Which gets me to lesson number one. I thought my life started rather unremarkably, but I soon learned the importance of the foundation I would receive from my two parents. Loving parents from the dirt poor South, who after I was born decided to come to Chicago to, have, to create a better life for my brothers and I. And they both worked for over 30 years in a glass factory to provide for their family, but importantly, they led by example. They taught me the importance of family, integrity, kindness, hard work, courage, and those values became the springboard for me as I began my life and my career. I also inherited some behavioral attributes from my parents, of course, part of my DNA, Things like humility, pride, fear of failure, and fear of not being good enough. And so I started my adult life with a terrific value foundation and some attributes that I would have to compensate throughout my life and career. Which leads me to the second lesson brought to us by the rock band Dawes. If you don't know where you're going, all roads will lead you there. As a first-time college graduate in our family, I came out of college, and I thought I got the world at my fingertips, except for a couple things. I had no vision. I had a weak voice. I had no clue what I wanted to do when I grew up. So I figured, you know, like all journeys, it would be pretty straightforward. I'll get a job, make some dough, 
Maybe sometime I'll have a career of some significance. But without a vision, I stumbled mightily. And when I say mightily, I am not exaggerating. You can't go below the floor. I applied for accounting jobs and received rejection letters as fast as I applied. Self-doubt started to creep in, doubts about my self-worth, whether I had what it takes to be successful, and whether I could meet the high expectations of my parents. Fortunately, I didn't stay down, I rebounded, which brings me to lesson number three. Failing is not falling down, it's staying down. So, in this chapter of my life, I was at my worst. I met my wife-to-be when she was at her best. Great match. After repeated attempts and rejections, there's a pattern forming here, I finally convinced her to go out on a date with me, dated her, and ended up marrying her. And the trajectory of my life changed immediately. I applied for a job at a small firm to be a traveling auditor, so I got a bad Ford Escort, packed up everything I owned, which wasn't much, and I began traveling around the country auditing newspapers in my bad Ford Escort. And I was all alone on the road, and what clearly became apparent, and I realized, wow, this is why they call it work. So I got to work. I worked hard. I started to see some success. But I looked around and I said, boy, do I have to grow. I am limited in my capabilities. Which leads me to lesson number four. Breakthroughs are right around the corner. Boy, don't we wish we could see them coming, right? But in looking back, what I realized is breakthroughs occur when circumstances, opportunity, and preparedness converge and collide. We all know we can't predict the future. There's too much uncertainty in the future. And so what this lesson teaches me is to be current, to be relevant, and to build a deep, broad toolbox that prepares you for what the future will bring to you and the opportunities you will be afforded before they come, to be a lifelong learner. Example, even though I knew I did not want to be an accountant, no offense to accountants, I took and I passed the CPA exam. Much because my wife encouraged and supported me to do that. And just when I thought this newspaper gig wasn't a long-term solution for me, my bosses came to me and said, we want you to take on a tough assignment, an assignment of a litigious client engagement in Dallas, Texas. And I'd have to leave my newborn daughter and my wife. So all the way home, I thought of a thousand reasons not to take the assignment. Enter wife, swift kick in the pants. Of course you're going to take the job. Breakthrough moment number one. I gained 10 years of experience over the course of one summer. MBA, no MBA. Now three kids. Traveling job, bigger responsibilities. Again, thousand reasons why I don't have time for an MBA. Enter wife, swift kick in the pants. Of course you're gonna go for your MBA. We'll figure it out. Enter Chicago Tribune, breakthrough moment again. Chicago Tribune wants me to come join the organization, and I think this, I've hit the lottery. The real lesson there is that every day you need to elevate your performance, stay current and relevant. You need to interview for your next job every day because you are interviewing for your next job every day. Oh, and marry well. Which leads me to lesson number five, so I joined Tribune, and I'm like, this is the best media company in the world. I'm going to have all sorts of opportunities. I have a passion for leadership. 
oh, I can't wait to get started. And then I arrived in the big leagues and I looked around and said, holy cow, I got to up my game. Leads me to this lesson number five, to reinvent yourself often and big ears, thick skin. My reinvention project, as I call it, really accelerated when I applied this principle of big ears and thick skin. What do I mean by that? When I started listening, and I mean really listening, asking the right questions and really listening, I realized all the solutions and ideas are right in front of you, if you would just listen. When I started identifying the nuggets of truth and the criticism that I received, from my bosses and my colleagues. I accelerated my capabilities as a leader and I became a better person. I also realized, back to the DNA, that I need to toughen up mentally. I realized if you want to succeed in life and career, you need to be able to hear things you don't agree with or you don't like. And the other thing I had during this reinvention project was great great support from family, talented colleagues, great bosses, and mentors. I was going to put mentors in as a uh, lesson, but I just tuck it in here because the mentors I had were people that cared, people that told me when I had a bad idea, don't do that, made good ideas better, shared their wisdom with me liberally, and became my role models. Their fingerprints are all over the reinvention process. Could not have done them without them. I also then realized I'm positioned to start leading from the front, meaning get out in front of your employees, get out in front of your community, get out in front of your company, agitate change, insert yourself in the strategy and culture of the company. And more and more breakthroughs began to occur and come around the corner for me. But as you know, life is like an escalator. You either move up or you move down. If you stand still, you go down. And speaking of down, I'm glad there's a lesson number six that I learned. And that is, you're really never finished. The end of one chapter is the beginning of the next. And in my case, after a 23-year career at the Tribune and a successful run as CEO of the Chicago Tribune, my career ended. And despite all of my efforts to not let my job or my company define me, it was disheartening, emotional. It was a sad day, the day I left the tower. I started to doubt myself again. Couldn't figure out what's next in this maze of an opportunity ahead. I started to feel like I was back in college. Same feeling of doubt. But like most of the time in my career in life, I've been blessed with breakthrough moments. Another breakthrough occurred and I got a new title. Grandpa. A, a title that I am highly qualified for. And unlike all the other positions that I've held, I'm going to hold on to this one for a long time. And what has happened as a result of the birth of my two grandsons is it's inspired me again. It's inspired me to begin my next chapter, the next chapter in my career. So I formed my own company. It's going to focus on advising clients on how to thrive in disruptive times, and importantly, I want to focus on developing emerging leaders. Leaders that want to lead with authenticity. Leaders that care about people and results. Leaders that are compassionate and driven. And leaders that understand their primary job is to create an environment where people can do their best work. And when I think about that next chapter, it brings me back to where I started, which is the road to success is not a straight line. There are many detours, ups, downs, 
But the key is to stay focused on three things. Back to adapting, evolving, and reinventing. And regardless of how you define success, I believe if you use this blueprint, you can achieve whatever goals you set for yourself and your family. I'm very excited about the next chapter in my journey, so I'm going to end where I started. It's not where you start. It's where you finish. And I'm finished for now. Thank you.